everybody, and welcome to the PR Podcast, giving you guys a better insight on how to master your bodies and raising your PRs in and outside the gym. I'm here with my two amazing hosts, Annabelle Hi. and Morgan. What's up? Annabelle with her super soft eyes. <laughs> I wasn't ready. <laughs> <laughs> you were too, she was still trying to flex on the camera. So welcome back after that amazing recovery episode. Um, got some cool uh, opening stories to go along. Morgan uh, just finished nationals. And he also had a cool trip down to Ireland. Uh, why don't you give us a little rundown on all that? Okay, quick rundown. Nationals, uh, third place. Not in the great. world. In the world. In, in the nation. In the, in the nation. nation. Um, so that was okay. Ireland was amazing. That's Beautiful not, country. that's more than okay. We're going to skip over that. <laughs> cool. Whatever. Uh, uh, Ireland was amazing. Uh, really fresh over there. Fresh air, fresh food, nice people, mm-hmm. a lot of green everywhere. Uh, surprisingly, didn't drink as much whiskey as I thought it was. Um, went to the Guinness storehouse, which is like the most touristy thing I did. Pretty cool. Definitely recommend. That's it. Quick, quick little. Oh, that quick was little, quick. Vacation sounds boring. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's your favorite food? Uh, my favorite? Um, Why do I oysters. Always, I always ask about food. Oysters. oysters. Uh, I went to this restaurant called, uh, I think it's Moran. Moran's. I don't know. I might be butchering it, but it was really good. Yeah. So I had these oysters and they, had, they put breadcrumbs on them mm-hmm. and they were like fried. But it was amazing. It was the best oysters I've had in my life. What did they, did they season it with like the hot sauce or anything like that? It had some type of sauce. I just don't know what it was. Mm-hmm. Too much sauce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then nice. Annie, you're still continuing 75 hard. Yeah. So what actually, day you want? Uh, at the time of recording, today's day 70. So then... by the time this airs, I'll be done. <laughs> and then what? Uh, I'm going to continue some of the practices. Like of the whole challenge, like. My favorite part from the beginning was the reading 10 pages a day because I enjoy reading, but I don't always like make the time to. But now that it's forced me to like some days, I'll just be able to do the bare minimum and just do 10 pages. But other days, like once you get in it, like into a book or into something you're reading, like you can't stop. So that's been that's been cool. I'll probably do continue some of like the two a day type exercises, but I like waking up in the morning and starting my day off with a walk. So what I've been doing is I drive to Cal State. I get there like at 7. That's where I work. I get there like at 7, do like 45 minutes to an hour, just walk by myself like around the campus. I avoid all the 8 o'clock class students that are getting there late, all the traffic, and it's just a good day to or a good way to start my day. So I'll probably continue that. Let me just commend you because you did it once <laughs> and you already didn't finish. I felt like three times. And then I started again before nationals, uh, before my competition. I was like, all right, I failed. I'm going to continue. But then I, I stopped. This time I didn't I didn't fail. I just stopped on purpose. Mm. The other times I failed. I chose to. <laughs> this time I chose to not do it because walking or doing some type of exercise before competition when, when I'm supposed to be resting just did not make sense to me. Yeah. So I was like, all right, I'm not going to do it, but I am going to do it. Okay. I, finish. I can't, I can't let you wood on me. <laughs> <laughs> if you wait till it's not like winter, I'll join you again. I'll do it. But no, this oh, is the winter's going to be rough. Yeah, it's going to be raining. And it's I'd be rather cold. see, cause I started August, like the end of August. It was hot and I don't mind being outdoors when it's hot. That's I'm okay with that, but I can't, uh, being cold like hurts my bones. I can't. You're all your bones. Oh, I bro. know. You are my little. The, um, okay. okay. <laughs> you are the oldest out of all of us. I am. I'm the most mature. That's what you want to call it. <laughs> and then I am almost on peak week. That's right. Yeah. Competition's coming yeah, up. Competition. The uh, Natural Olympia in Vegas is coming up pretty quickly. And what we day? are. October. November sixteenth. <laughs> this, this is this is why you have your, yeah. your notes today. I have notes today because my short term memory is horrible because of this cut. But it's uh, normal when you're, you know, entering the depletion process and getting uh, deeper and deeper into it. Um, but yeah, so we are a little less than two weeks out from the Olympia, and I feel I feel the best I've ever felt on peak week, and I think I'm gonna do pretty well. That's super exciting. Not to sound cocky, I'm gonna win. Confident. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel I feel really good. Um, obviously, 
it's the Olympia, so you never know who's going to show up. And, you know, all I could do is just bring my best and prepare to um, the, the best that I can and just hope that I perform well and the judges see it in my favor and, yeah, hopefully come home with some gold. Cool. Yeah. Hopefully we'll have you come back and debrief. Yeah. We'll to talk about it on one of our next episodes. That'd be cool. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Hopefully I'll have a nice uh, big medal right here. The good thing about it is since I'm not doing 75 hard, you're going to be finished with it and you're going to be done competing. Oh, we can have a shot of whiskey again. Yeah, yeah we can start getting a shot of whiskey. <laughs> I'm going to enter my bulk. You can start bulking with me. No, I'm not bulking. All bu- <laughs> you're I'm, recruiting. No, I'm, all I'm not bulking. bulking. <laughs> I'm not bulking. I'll 75 pass. fat. <laughs> <laughs> New challenge. <laughs> Every single day we're eating like hostess treats. And, no, I'm just kidding. Um, but I am going to do uh, my lean bulk at, right after I'm done with my competition. Um, and just kind of get back onto the muscle building process. And Ooh, just that'd be get... interesting to hear how you're going to approach it too. Yeah, like how, how your plan is. Yeah, be, I, I'm sure there's a lot of people that would be interested in hearing how you're going to do that. Yeah, I would love to go into the entire like reverse dieting and yeah. how I track calories and macronutrients and how they slowly kind of um, progress and rise uh, during the reverse diet. And which is really important for competitors so we don't damage our metabolisms and destroy our hormones and it balances, you know, it allows our bodies to bounce back properly at a faster rate and we're able to get into the gym and feel better and basically just get our bodies and our minds back on track at a, at a, at a faster rate because a lot of these times when these competitors are are finished with their competitions, they, they're, you've been so deprived for so mm-hmm. long <laughs> that you just want to eat everything and you kind of like almost have like a negative idea towards the gym because you've been working out for so long. And, you know, a lot of these competitors, they kind of just eat everything, stop working out and they blow up and they damage their metabolism. They feel horrible. And, you know, it's very, very hard to bounce back from that. So the reverse diet post show is super, super critical for every competitor. And so, yes, I would love to get into If you're into, thinking long-term health, I would even say like it's you just have to put as much effort into like your reverse diet. Yeah. Like, cause if, especially if you're planning on competing again later on, like, I mean, you have to make sure that you come out of that prep, like yeah. slowly. And they say with that. Intent. And they say that. Re- aver- or, <laughs> <laughs> I just thought about that. Uh, the other benefits you're going to receive. You're talking about something in November. So, <laughs> so, what were you talking about? <laughs> viewer discretion is advised. Expecting content. So, um, there, as many of you guys know, uh, November is um, no, not only no shave November, but it's also no nut November for a lot of people. And um, I was asking Morning Morgan if he was going to be participating in no nut November, and he was like, "What was that?" And I was like, "Well, I guess it's, it's similar to like sober October, where you don't, you know, yeah. drink or do drugs." And I go, "It's the same thing for no nut November is for the entire month of November." Yeah. <laughs> if you're not too sure, Google it. Just don't do it at work or on your work computer. <laughs> Morgan goes, "Oh, no peanuts." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I already had peanut butter today. <laughs> like, Damn. <laughs> like, I really enjoy my healthy oh, fats. Oh goodness. Okay. Uh, Tiang shaking her head right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the only reason I brought that up is because I know some competitors, uh, their lib- libido doesn't is gone oh, during prep. Right. So I was saying like after with, when you're doing your reverse diet. Well, I don't know how you are, Again, you know, but you said you already part- you already broke the no no November. <laughs> so I'm assuming you're fine. Uh, <laughs> only other competitors. Oh, you're making me red. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on. My mom listens to this, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mama Annabelle. <laughs> oh, my God. Hands, so my, okay. my hands are all sweaty now. <laughs> <laughs> so Anyways. today's topic is going to be one that we actually uh, kind of announced on our Instagram. And um, we wanted to get some of our listeners' feedback and input is um, about women and strength training and some of the myths and some of the concerns that are associated with it. Um I happen to be a woman. <laughs> you guys happen to be trainers who have had female clients. Um, so we all kind of have some experience and uh, we wanted to address some of the issues because our ultimate goal is to empower and educate more women to get a barbell in their hands, Hit to the start gym. lifting some heavy yeah. weights. Get some dumbbells. Lift some iron. Get strong. Yeah. So um, I have my notes. So <laughs> a, lot, a lot of notes. A lot of notes. So. The first and biggest concern that I think we got overall, and I think you guys may have also 
remembered from training clients is the concern about getting too big or too bulky. So have you guys had clients <laughs> that have been concerned about that? I mean, even people who, women who aren't clients, I always get that question. Like, um, women will, will, you know, um, ask fitness questions in the DMs and be like, I want to weight lift, but I don't, I don't want to get too bulky. And then they'll send me like a women's profile, like, you know, like IG, you know, fitness person and be like, I want to look like her, but how do I do it without looking bulky? I'm just like, well, that she weight lifts, you you know, like you, you, they want to get quote unquote toned. And it's like, well, in order to get toned, you have to weight lift because women, the way they build muscle tones their body and it also helps raise metabolism. It also helps reduce body fat. Like there's a lot, a lot of benefits that come to weight training. And I could definitely 100% assure you that you will never wake up one day bulky from weightlifting. Like you're not going to wake up one day and be a bodybuilder. Like, cause that's hard to do. I try to do it and I still can barely do it. Yeah. <laughs> and I've been training for 15 years. And so I think having that, um, that fear or that concern is something that, um, is something that, sh- that shouldn't be feared at all. So I think weightlifting is extremely beneficial and the whole bulky idea is, is just not going to happen unless you're specifically training and eating to be bulky then yeah, then it'll happen. Obviously, if you're at a super high caloric surplus, um, then you're going to get bulky. And there's there's really no way to train to get bulky. It's really more nutrition-based because whether I'm cutting or bulking, my training is pretty much the same. I'm always kind of just lifting heavy. And then my my nutrition is what determines if I'm cutting or gaining. How about you? I agree. I mean, I've, I, I get that question all the time too. Like, How do I look a certain way, but I don't want to be bulky? And I think what they mean is just you see these other women that obviously are taking steroids and they're they're bulky. They're jacked. Um, But I don't think you're going to look that way just training and not taking steroids. Um, Again, it depends. There might be that factor of genetics. I don't know exactly. There might be some women that could gain a little bit more muscle than the average woman. Yeah. But. For the most part, if you are going to look bulky, that bulky look might also just be that, like you said, you're eating a little bit too much and you're just putting on too much body fat, yeah. which gives you that illusion of being bulky. But it's not, it's probably not muscle that's making you look super bulky. Right. Yeah. So that doesn't mean to like go and do a bunch of cardio. Like, yeah, and cardio is good, obviously, for cardiovascular health and for raising metabolism, losing body fat as well. But weight training is going to be the main, main, um, kind of factor when it comes to to toning up and and getting lean. Um, And yeah, the whole steroid thing is a big one because a lot of people, they, it's just lack of knowledge. You know, Mm -hmm. they see a woman and you know, it's um, you know, denial, like, Oh, there's no way she's taking steroids. She just looks great naturally Mm -hmm. or, you know, and and, and whatnot. So, you know, just be mindful that usually when a woman looks too good to be true, when it comes to that type of muscularity, you know, it might be a little more um, enhancements going on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Good insight. And the the main reason that women will generally not get bulky or get too bulky too fast, at least not to the point where they can't pull back on their training and stop it, is primarily having to do with their hormones. So women have testosterone just like men do, but we have about 15 to 20% less than you guys. And testosterone, as well as growth factor, human growth factor, those are the two like primary hormones that are involved with recovery and repair which recovery repair that's what's going to build muscle so women have that we have that capability but we have a much higher ratio of different hormones so we have estrogen and progesterone estrogen does very similar for us so estrogen has those like recovery type of mechanisms so it helps um, minimize fatigue so when estrogen is a little bit elevated um, helps minimize fatigue during training um, helps promote recovery after training so it's being estrogen or having estrogen and progesterone are not completely bad but um when women weight train or strength train um you do get a little bit more free testosterone or serum testosterone so you want that because it's gonna help repair and build muscle um but not to the degree that men do like seriously like 15 to 20 percent less and that's even as fast as you guys build muscle we're at least that much slower. Yes. Easy takeaway. Don't be afraid to fake to, to weight lift. You're not going to become a bodybuilder overnight. Go in the weight room, 
and knock that shit out. Because I'll tell you, I'll tell you this right now. When I'm in the weight room, these women are lifting, if not just as hard, harder than some of these men. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I see it. They'll have their hat low, headphones in, <clears throat> you know, or like the hoodie on, and they're putting in work. Like from when I first started weightlifting back when I was in high school, going to 24 hour fitness, like compared to now, like the amount of women inside the weight area where the dumbbells are and the squat racks is like quadrupled. And yeah. it, it's great because that, that yeah. fear is not there. Like it used to be where it used to be like women only do cardio and the men weight lift. Now, and that was all unisex. And that's kind of like media and propaganda and like social norms, like driven. But now like gyms have, just like houses, right? They have open floor plans. So yeah. everything's mixed and mingled. And while there's like different compartment, like sections, everything's open. So yeah, you see so many more women on the platforms, like yeah. by the dumbbells. Yeah. I know a lot of like, um, people have been going to the gym for a long time. I know they probably remember this, but the old, like the old <laughs> floor plans back when like the, uh, the old 24s, they used to separate cardio and weightlifting. Yeah. And there used to be like <laughs> separate, completely separate rooms and you wouldn't, very rarely see a female inside the weight area and um and now they got rid of that entire concept so yeah that's good good to hear that's what's up. so the second concern that we got which was really unique and i didn't even think of that about this but it's definitely a concern it's um women are concerned about losing their boobs like <laughs> while weight training i could relate so to that. Same. Can- <laughs> <laughs> my chest size decreases when i start to lose body fat yeah so when it comes to boobs and women, so female breast tissue is about 75% fat. So if you're weight training, if you're raising your metabolism, if you're dropping body fat, it's natural that your boobs are going to reduce in size. And just how we know this is another, like not specific to women, but you can't spot reduce where you want to decrease fat deposits, but you can build. So um, while I was looking into this question a little bit is um, a lot of women in order to kind of like combat that is like really training chest, like in training your chest muscles, because a lot of time, like there's men that have like bigger cup sizes than I do. And that's because they train their chest and women are built the same way. We have the same chest muscle insertions and you can build your chest the same way. Um, But obviously like the breast tissues mostly fat so if that's disappearing but if you're building muscle like underneath you can almost offset a little bit of that um and i think this is a concern because if we're talking fitness like in terms of aesthetics like being proportional and curvy i mean the fitness industry like breast augmentations are like huge and like because they kind of communicate symmetry and like unfortunately like related or i mean compared to like butts like you can't build your boobs like how you can like a your butt or your quads um so i mean it makes a little bit more sense and there's no shame in like breast augmentations like if women want to do that like especially for symmetry but i mean it's definitely not necessary so yeah they have really good push-up sports bras (laughs) and back to the uh the chest concern um a lot of times when i have female female clients they'd be like how do i get rid of this like the the fat in the corner of the armpit uh, yeah. and yeah. you had to train your chest that that's that's uh that's part of your chest right there so you have to uh, start doing some bench presses and some push-ups even if you that you know start off dumbbell flies some dips now, do we still call them girl push-ups when they're on the knees because that, that used to be the term like you're like oh do some girl push-ups I feel like, I feel, yeah, yeah, right. I feel like just that's that, push-ups. Oh, that's it's just a variation. Right. 2019, that's just, yeah, it's yeah. just a variation. Yeah. They're yeah. Modified. modified. Yeah, modified push-ups. Modified push-ups. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so basically, yeah, your boobies are going to get smaller. Yes. Yeah. It's a... But it's yeah. all you gotta good. Weigh, yeah, you got to weigh it out. Because... You want to look better or leaner. Yeah. It's, it's all good, it's though, a little because sacrifice. We, we booty men anyways. <laughs> I, I don't discriminate. <laughs> Ain't got no type. <laughs> I don't discriminate. <laughs> so All women are beautiful. So one thing I want to do mention is one of the things to avoid if you don't want to lose breast size, like while you're dropping body fat, is overdoing cardio. Because like when you're reducing body fat, you, you can't pick where it goes away from. So typically... People have like different body fat store like patterns. Usually the hardest place to lose, you know, people's trouble areas 
that's usually the place that you hold on to fat the most, right? Like, for example, for me, it's like my lower body. So if I'm dropping like body fat, I'm going to notice like, like a reduction in size of my body all around. But if I do that through cardio, I don't get to pick as much as if I'm doing, if I'm creating a calorie deficit and building muscle like through resistance training or through weight training. And I'm building muscle at the same time as I'm raising my metabolism and dropping body fat. So you want to avoid overdoing cardio if you don't want to risk the boobies. But I mean, cardio is great for cardiovascular health. So like Morgan said, it's you kind of have to weigh out the Pick your poison. pros and cons. <laughs> All right, so that's about boobies. So our next Instagram concern and myth that we got was one of my favorites because it kind of goes the opposite way. So this person was concerned with um, the women's ability to gain muscle, like, and probably referring to like in comparison to men. So this concern was uh, somebody who I know her; she weight trains regularly. So her concern is like, can I build muscle? Or what, what is the difficulty um, difficulties that are associated with building muscle for women? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> are you apologizing? <laughs> Come on, guys. So, sorry. It's just how so it is. It's just how it is. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> so, so if you are familiar with um, Stronger by Science, they actually have uh, several... Um, people who have like looked into this topic specifically. So pound for pound or relative like to body weight, um, it's actually a myth that women can't gain muscle as fast as men. So one example that I saw in one of the articles they provided was that if two brand new people, brand new to lifting, um, a male and female started weight training, um, men start off with a little bit more body um, or muscle, like skeletal, uh, a little bit more muscle like in general, muscle mass compared to women. But if both people gain um, five pounds of body, five pounds of muscle, women relative to men are already like gaining muscle at a lot uh, faster rate. So and a lot of that has to do with like their ability to recover intro workout, like how we talked about in the first um, our first concern. Um, women also have about 30% more type 1 muscle fibers. So that's kind of what's helping us recover in between sets. So women, and this is like specifically talking like beginning intermediate lifters, like once you're advanced, like it's a little bit different. It's a little bit harder, but uh, women have about 30% more type 1 muscle fibers, which is the slow twitch muscle fibers, which is more conducive to like um, like muscle endurance and we don't fatigue as fast compared to men who have more fast twitch muscle fibers, which that's going to be what's beneficial for like a max deadlift or sprinting like a sprinting. Yeah, yeah. Workouts. So those are type two muscle fibers. So because of that, women like don't gain uh, muscle much slower than men, but relative like to their body weight, body size, like it's about the same. So, and recoverability, like we said, is the same. Um, men have testosterone. Women have some testosterone, but we also have estrogen. Um, one of the things that uh, I wanted to bring up too is uh, how men have sort of like a steady like concentration of testosterone in their like system. Men, uh, women don't. So we kind of have like, um, we go through like a month cycle of hormone fluctuations. So what the USA soccer team did this year is um, in August, right? They trained around the female athletes like menstrual cycles. So they took advantage of the different hormone fluctuations that um, happened and were able to train like uh, train according to like their hormone cycles, which was like super interesting. Um, there's a couple studies that have been done uh I think three or four, like with women specifically and weight training, like around their cycle. Um, and, and we're talking like elite athletes. These are like, you know, world like competitive athletes. But um, this is applicable for women too, like or the average woman that's strength training. So um, I don't know if you guys are interested. I can I can do like an infographic or we could like talk about it a little bit now. Um, but it's basically... Uh, 
pushing harder, going harder in the gym, like during one phase of your cycle and then kind of tapering off or taking advantage of doing like a deload week or, you know, uh, like going a little like changing your rep ranges or changing the intensity during a different phase. So it's kind of what the soccer players did. Um, and it was really cool. I mean, it's good science. So what what are the phases in the cycle? OK, I'm interested because okay. I have yeah. female athletes. So, OK, deal cool. coming. So, <laughs> OK, I need your um, I need your age. I need your height, your weight and your menstrual cycle. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm, <laughs> that's going to be a new <laughs> it's be on application. So what is your menstrual cycle? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Are you pretty regular? So that would be kind of weird. Right. It would be. Not but if they're but if an you... advanced athlete and you tell them why. Yeah, you're right. You're right. That's you want to win? Yeah. Annabelle told me to do this. <laughs> Blame it on. Okay. So we go through like a 28 to 30 day cycle, right? It starts day one with menses. Like, so that's when women have their period. Right after that, you go into the follicular phase. So that's the phase where estrogen levels are much higher than progesterone. Um, or they're elevating higher because at menses, both progesterone and estrogen are low. Follicular phase happens. So if we're picturing like a circle, here, we'll go this way, clockwise, counterclockwise, counterclockwise. So follicular for the phase. people <laughs> that can't see because oh, right. <laughs> um, she's putting her hand in a, in a, in a half circle going okay, from yeah, her so <laughs> right to the top. <laughs> follicular phase. That's when you want to push it. So that's when you want to go hard in the gym, like go hard in the paint during this phase. So recovery is going to be much better. <laughs> is that funny? <laughs> recovery is going to be much better. Um, <laughs> what are you laughing, man? Uh, okay. Yeah. So hard Let's be pain, mature about the <laughs> menstrual cycle. Oh. <laughs> oh, you okay. lost me. Okay. So how long does the first phase last? So it's going to vary woman to woman, okay, okay. but about a week. I don't week. know much. So I'm but, trying so, to educate so roughly, all the male listeners as well. Roughly a week. Um, sometimes a little bit longer, sometimes a little bit less. Okay. So follicular phase, that's after your period, first step is follicular follicular phase. So that's oh, when okay. um, recovery is much better, energy levels are high, um, estrogen is rising while progesterone, progesterone is still pretty low. Um, after that, this the top of the circle, right? So now we're in ovulation. That's the second phase. So during ovulation, that's when women are most likely to get pregnant. So during those couple of days, um, that's still a time where you can push it. So usually, like, women are feeling friskier around that time of the month. Like, energy levels are still high. Um, you can still push it in the gym. Uh, after follicular and ovulation phases, so then we go into the luteal phase. And that's when your body is kind of like... Mm, girl, we don't have a child, you know, there's no reason for us to like hang on to this like uterine lining. So getting ready to shed all that. So that's the time where you kind of want to take advantage of like a deload week or changing your rep ranges if you need to um, be a little bit nicer to yourself. Like if you're not feeling like super high energy, um, do some more recovery. So one of the studies found that uh, women were more likely to be or get injuries during the luteal phase um, just because like your mind muscle isn't as clear you're not thinking as sharp you're not feeling as sharp um and and yeah so that that would be like a good time to take like a uh, not necessarily time off focus yeah. more on technique and yes. not, not go so heavy yeah yeah so you don't necessarily want to max out um i do want to say that these studies that were done like are all like on athletes when it comes to like surveys of like regular women, some women were complete opposites. Some women like during luteal phase like had way more energy and during follicular phase had way less. So, I mean, it's going to vary woman to woman or, you know, from person to person. But overall, that's kind of the consensus when it comes to like elite athletes. And the basic takeaway is push yourself. You still want to push yourself through the entire month through the entire like length of your program and every day that you go to the gym should be with intent like to improve but also take into consideration that you want to take advantage of the times that you're feeling you're feeling good and and get after it and be a little bit more kind to yourself when you're not yeah so, so pretty much with anything like fitness wise it's trial and error 
So give it a shot. If you, if you are like a, you know, more of a high level athlete and you want to get the most benefit day, day per day, um, try it out and see how it works yeah. for you. Yeah. That was super interesting. <laughs> because was he, yeah, yeah, that was, that was yeah, a cool because study. You, I you, mean, I never knew this. I yeah. mean, I'm like, and it's so crazy that like we're in an age of information, so you get to know all this stuff. But if you don't know like how to like maneuver, or take advantage. So um, somebody to follow on Instagram women is um, Dr. Jolene Brighton. Uh, she has a, a book called Beyond the Pill which it's it's talking about contraception it's like but basically she explains contraception like mostly um and being on the pill but she talks about all kinds of things related to hormones and females and like how it's not all bad and drama and crazy like you can take advantage and we have like we're like super women like parts of the month and like a little bit less super women like other parts like you know so really interesting she's a good person to follow a few so you're going to try the study? You're going to see if you go I, hard I, in the paint? So I do. I, I do. Follicular. <laughs> <Follicular. laughs> so since I learned this, um, it's kind of interesting because in grad school, like I had a present or we had a presentation where we were talking about um, birth control and like addressing like the knowledge gaps. Like so a lot of like, for example, like women on birth control is completely different. So this is kind of talking more like women on who are not on birth control or not on um like any sort of contraceptives. So um, a lot of the things that you are not told are the, the drawbacks of being on hormonal birth control. Like one just related to like health and fitness specifically is um, like you get a lot of nutrient deficiencies when you're on like birth control. And one of the main reasons because there's um, – you get estrogen like like say you were talking a pill – the pill that you take every day, uh, you have estrogen and progesterone, but um, in the pill, there's a synthetic form of progesterone. It's called progestin, which it's synthetic. So your body recognizes it more or less like your hormone that's in your body, but not exactly. So it doesn't have the same full spectrum like effects on your body that progesterone, the hormone that you produce. Yeah. Yeah. So this is not to say anybody should be on birth control or not be on birth control for any reason. Like everybody should make their own informed decision. But yeah. yeah, So like one of the points that we were making in our presentation for like in grad school is that um, we wanted to address the fact that not all of this is being communicated. So a lot of the time, like doctors are prescribing these things for like symptoms, like, Oh, like you have like heavy, painful periods. Like here's some birth control. Like, oh, you don't want to get pregnant, here's some birth control. Like, without, like, giving you all of the things that this could happen, this could happen long-term, this could happen short-term, this, you know, so. And we kind of talked about that on the motivation episode with me and the anxiety medication. Like, the same thing. Doctors never went into any of the side effects or long-term, yeah. you know, um, damages. But I, just like Morgan said, that was super interesting. Cool. Because, yeah. like, because me being a, an athlete, like, if the male's body went through something like that, you better believe I'm going to try to take advantage and yeah. be like, okay, this is the month or this is the week where I, you know, I go really, really heavy. Yeah. And okay, this is a week I need to take it easy because like as a top of my athlete, like we're always trying to find ways to kind of like hack the body and try to find little advantages. So I've, yeah, if you're, if you're a high level athlete and you're trying to find ways to like, you know, take control of your hormones, mm-hmm. that's super interesting. Yeah. That was, it's like you said, yeah. like superwoman for a few weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Like take advantage of that. That's when you can PR if you wanted to, that's when you can, um, I mean, take advantage of your energy levels. Like you feeling a little frisky, like, you know, take that, take that energy <laughs> that out in the gym. Ovulation. How many weeks? Yeah. Yeah. So, and I'll, I'll do, depending on your goal, you might or might not want to go hard during that time. <laughs> yeah. So Just I could saying. do like a, a infographic or like, we'll put a post up like on our yeah. page, like yeah. about this like perfect. training cycle. So, and, um, I do want to touch on the, the whole, um, women building muscle faster than men, um, at the very beginning. Because uh, I I have a, um, a couple that I train, um, Selena and Eric, shout out. Um, and when we first started, she gained muscle faster than he did. And she was a beast. I mean, she still is, hands down. But now yeah. since we're getting deeper into <laughs> it, and like now Eric, like, oh, but he, he passed her up now. And he's got like super vascular. He's building muscle at, at a super fast rate still. Like his rate never slowed down. And it probably won't for a long time because he's, he's still such a newbie. Yeah. And so, yes, yeah, so I just want to touch on that and be like, I've, I've seen that firsthand. 
That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Really cool. I mean, that was interesting to hear too. Cause I'm like, Oh, that's true. Like women, like, I mean, we're just small, like, you know, on average smaller than men. So you can't see it as much. And like, there's, depending on the woman, like so many more like different curves and, you know, places for muscle to go, like compared to like a man, like where you can kind of just see it like shoulders, upper body, chest, so, calves, calves <laughs> for some people. <laughs> um, so, so that was it for like our, the myths and concerns that we got like from Instagram. Do you guys have any others that um, you want to talk about? Like I know, one for me, like, um, I hear often too, is like, uh, how do I avoid like getting hurt or like getting hurt in the gym? So people, that's one of the fears that people have. Um, but as long as you, so you're more likely to get hurt doing other things if you're not strength trained. Like mm -hmm. if you're not, if you don't have muscle on your body or like good, um, like mind muscle connection, like you're more likely to get hurt if you don't strength train regularly. So um, I think Brett Contreras had like a like little quote like if you think like, that's a, strength the, training, the glute guy right the glute guy yeah if you're um, I lost my train of thought like he said if if you're worried about like um, I don't know what did he say strength never mind oh, <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna <laughs> I forgot you <laughs> you jumbled my mind. <laughs> uh, no, 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 okay, 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 got it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it's it's rubbing off. This is why we take notes. <laughs> um, uh, but the gist of it was like being weak is dangerous. Like, so if you think, okay, this is it. This is it. Got it. Got it. Got it. I'm connecting if you the think, dots already. Yeah. If you think, <laughs> <laughs> if you think lifting weights is dangerous, like try being weak. Being weak is dangerous. And I'm like, oh, truth. This is truth, facts. Truth bomb. Facts. Yeah, I totally, <laughs> I totally agree with that. Especially you start to age, like just naturally, you start to lose muscle mass. And muscle is one of those things that if you don't, if you don't use it. You lose it. You lose it. And so, yeah, strength training is definitely something you always want to try to incorporate, even as you get into your later years of life. And um, I love it when I see, like, the older people and they're, they they got muscle on them because it just looks good. And, mm -hmm. like, usually 99% of the time when they tell me their age, it's something unbelievable. Like, yeah. I'm 60 years old and, like, and they look like they're 40, you know, because they stand up straighter. Yeah. Their chest is out, you know. They're not hunched over and you know, brittle and walking differently. Like you could just tell like a healthy lifestyle compared to a sedentary lifestyle almost immediately. Yeah. The contrast between like a 60 year old who doesn't weight train or doesn't exercise compared to like a 60 year old that does is huge. Like it's not so much different, like, you know, 20, 30, 40s, like you can't tell too much, but like once they're in their sixties and seventies, well, Morgan disagrees. I disagree. <laughs> so, you I don't know look people. like the average. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know people who I went to high school with. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. whoa, whoa, you look way older. Anyway. Than you. Um, so in the anti-aging thing, that has a lot to do with hormones too. Yeah. Um, so the anabolic hormones, testosterone, anabolic. anabolic, testosterone and human growth hormone, those both raise through strength training, through like resistance training. And those are anti-aging hormones. I mean, they're they're anabolic. Yeah. So and, since and, you're, uh, I'm sorry, since you're just touched on it, what are some of the benefits? So, oh, I got a, oh, I got a list. Of strength training. So we've got years and years and years of research now, and there's endless amounts of weight training or benefits. So um, I'll just go down the list of like some of like the primary ones. Um, so obviously muscle strength, endurance, and power. That's number one. So strength training is going to give you that. Power. Yeah, <laughs> bone muscle and connective tissue durability mm. so this is where we're talking about like osteoporosis like in later years mm -hmm. like you can avoid you can avoid that or like really minimize like your chance of getting osteoporosis and osteo uh where's the other one osteoarthritis so that's like where yeah. your joints because weightlifting literally strengthens your bones yes not just your muscle mm -hmm. yeah and that's yeah. A, that's a huge that's a huge one yes um so another big one is the communication between mind and muscle. So and that's huge not only for like cognitive function like you're literally like smarter obviously. <laughs> but like I mean there's so much more benefit. Like you can like when you reach for something like you're much more connected to your body rather than just going through the motions. Um growth hormone 
um, blood glucose regulation. So that's really huge for people who have um, insulin sensitivity um, issues. So people who are like diabetic or predisposed like either genetically or because of lifestyle to type 1 diabetes or type 2 diabetes. Um, weight training is like one of the one of the main proven benefits or one of the main proven benefits of weight training is blood glucose regulation. So blood sugar um, and aerobic fitness because you still get the same aerobic benefits of like cardiovascular training um, through resistance training, depending on, you know, the sets and reps and type of exercise you do. So some of the secondary benefits to weight training, this is for everybody, um, are libido. Like improved libido, Holla. <laughs> hormone regulation, which we talked a lot about, um, diabetes, so uh, obesity, hypertension, so people who have blood pressure issues, um, cardiovascular disease, so any kind of heart health issues, which is still like one of the primary killers of you know people Everybody. in in the U.S. Yeah. but uh, across the world, um, stroke. Uh, it improves insomnia or people who have sleep issues, um, osteoporosis and osteoarthritis, depression, mental health, and dementia. So um, one of the big things that a lot of people are studying now is resistance training and how it increases BDNF. That's brain-derived nootropic factor. Yeah. And that's basically more, basically more brain connectivity, like so, brain gains. Mm -hmm. Just think of it that way. I'm getting a lot of like, what? <laughs> this is why we have you on the B podcast, Annie. You are the smart one. Gains. That's all you BDM, have to say. BD, BDNF. <laughs> um, yes. I mean, so those are the benefits. And aesthetics. You forgot that one. Oh. <laughs> and looking good naked. Come on now. Come on. The real reason. That's the real reason, the real reason why any of us work out. <laughs> that really is. <laughs> That's why we have you guys. <laughs> okay. So, um. All right, so we talked about some of the myths and concerns, talked about some of the benefits that like are associated with weight training for women and men. So, but we're talking specifically for women. Um, how does a female or woman start a weight training strength training program, or what are the main things that she should focus on? First thing is to hit up me or Morgan, depending on what your goals are, and we'll <laughs> we'll give you a program. <laughs> no, you no. need no man. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not based off our, not based off our gender, based off our knowledge. <laughs> no, um, the first step is to go into a gym. That's step number one, and start light. Start with machines, and obviously, if you can get a trainer, awesome. Um, or just YouTube some stuff. You know, you it's yeah. very easy. There's there's so much information out there nowadays on how to do lifts properly, how to focus on technique and form, because like you said injury is horrible so if you go into the gym it's your first second third week and you hurt yourself well guess what you're not going to be in it for another six weeks or longer yeah. and so um if it's if you're a newbie to the gym technique is number one quality okay. over quantity is something that every new lifter should focus on okay so i would actually like agree so technique is Definitely number one. So if you don't know how to do a specific exercise, like learn how to do it, but you always want to learn how to do it and learn how to do it to the right intensity. So number one for me combined would be like technique and progressive overload. Mm -hmm. So you, depending on where you're at in the spectrum of like whether you consider yourself a beginner, intermediate or advanced lifter, you always want to push for growth or yeah. push for progress or push somewhere yeah, those two things would never so, change no matter how advanced you get yes so okay so we just listed off a lot of the benefits and one of the benefits that um morgan brought up which I is did. you did <laughs> this is off air when off we're air. having our pre our, <laughs> our pre meeting pre chat so it's self-esteem confidence yeah so a lot of the studies that are being done on women specifically in strength training had one of the biggest benefits uh, there was two, but one of the biggest ones was, was self-esteem. So, and that's huge. Like it has a lot to do. I mean, when we're talking about like women and how like social norms are constructed, like how like uh, esteem is built. Like, I mean, we have social media, we have, I mean, all kinds of medias, right? Like, so people are going to feel a type of way about themselves while comparing themselves to other, other people or other, 
things we see. So, I mean, strength training, like if that's going to be one of the main benefits, and that's that's huge. You know, I don't know. Have you guys like seen that? I don't know. That I think that'd be cool, like as a trainer to see, like see somebody like flourish, like so their self esteem. Or- I I noticed right away when I see a woman that works out, the confidence, the way they walk, they strut, and everything is mm-hmm. next level. It's it's there's a difference, um, and I think that's powerful. A uh, woman just feeling strong, not just physically, but you know, I don't know what's going on inside, but just her. I don't know. It, it's just different. Uh, what you I could tell right that away. Line. Yeah, you just feel it. It's pretty. So it's just a little intimidating. But you yeah. like it. I'm not going to say nothing. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But it, I think it's a, it's very powerful for yeah. women to feel confident in herself. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And um, okay. actually, just to before we change the subject. Mm-hmm. So obviously, I just compete, competed at nationals. And a lot of the women there, they're top level elite powerlifters. And it's funny that we didn't, I didn't, this didn't come to mind, but these, some of these women, well, most of these women actually, they lift more than the average guy at the gym. And you could tell they're super confident and they're not bulky. Mm -hmm. They, they look great. And they're strong as fuck. And if you see them, yeah, like you see them in just public, you never know. Well, I, I guess that could be like offensive, but you never know that they would lift so much weight. Yeah, because they look, they look great, but they don't look bulky, like huge. So yeah, yeah I just yeah. Well, I was watching your 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 live stream, and yeah, yeah these oh, women yeah. would come on the platform, too. and I'm like, how much is she lifting? Yeah, yeah, she looks tiny. What? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. it's crazy, and it Not makes, as a and it makes me feel no insecure. <laughs> so I have to stop watching. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, yeah, because there's there's women no, that amazing. are like. Yeah, stronger than than I am. Yeah. You know, it's crazy. So it's uh, it's pretty cool. That is cool. And you're you're pretty strong. Yeah, I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so we talked about myths and concerns. Thank you, people on Instagram who helped us with that. Um, talked about the benefits specifically for women, but for anybody in general. Um, so now, if I'm Trying to start as a woman, if I'm trying to start like a strength training program, let's talk about some of the main things that we want to make sure that we know or that we want to focus on, like when we're starting a strength training program. Yeah. So for for day one beginners, and this this goes for for men and women, um, the main focus that you should be looking towards is technique and form, um, because like the, the main thing is you don't want to go into the gym and hurt yourself. That, that, that's the main thing. If you go in there and you're in there one, two, three weeks and you end up hurting yourself, well, you know what? You're going to be out the gym now for six weeks or more because you're probably going to leave the gym. You're probably going to fear it now because now you're going to be like, oh, I don't want to go back and hurt myself again. Um, or you don't want to start from scratch again. And so the good thing is that, is that there is so much information out there now, you know, social media, YouTube, trainers, reach out or watch a video and learn how to do these movements kind of build that my muscle connection and make sure you're getting that technique down and this goes from beginner to intermediate all the way to advanced that is something you're always going to keep so learn it from day one so you can continue to learn it because a lot of these people when they start these programs where they start working out they don't learn proper technique and years until years down the road or or they don't learn it until after an injury happens and then they're forced to learn technique and they're like oh my gosh i've been doing this wrong this entire time no wonder why i haven't been seeing the results as much as i should have so technique and form would definitely be my my number one rule when um starting a program any type cool so um i would say next either right along with technique or just right under then would be progressive overload. Mm -hmm. So uh, doing resistance training or strength training with this, with the intensity that's going to create progress. So it's going to create growth, whether it's um, pushing more weight, um, training with more intensity, like higher reps and sets, lower reps and sets and higher weight, you know, whatever it may be, but you always want to be progressively overloading. So you want to train, to challenge the muscle, force it to adapt in some way or another. And yeah. that would be your second. So so basically every time you go to the gym, don't do squats at the same weight, the same rep range every single time you go in. Try to raise the weight or raise the rep range as you, you want to progressive. 
You want to you want to progress and overload the muscles. That's where progressive overload comes comes into play. I mean, even if you're a beginner though, um, and you're learning how to squat, you don't necessarily have to do more weight or reps. Just having better technique every session that's progressive overload. Yeah, as well. Well, yeah, that, that's rule number one. Technique. Yeah. So, um, and I think that's important too to mention because. Obviously, somebody that's starting out with like a training program isn't going to know like how to program themselves like a a plan or a workout or what type of um, like split they want to do or what type of approach they want to do. So um, you're right. I mean, just like making sure that they get in and are moving well and moving better and doing the things that are get them getting them moving well and moving better. That's still progress. So. Yeah. And again, the information is out there. You know, you can always go online, find a find a program and just start that. Or you can ask us. Or you can ask <laughs> us. We are pretty knowledgeable when it comes to this type of stuff. And we could easily do a program for you, according, you know, according to your goals and what you want to achieve. Um, but yeah, so it, it's definitely out there. So don't hesitate to um, to find it. Okay. So number three, um, I have to go nutrition. So you want to eat to fuel your workouts and eat to make sure that you're sustaining the muscle that you're working so hard in the gym to build. So you want to make sure you're eating enough calories, um, enough protein, and getting the micronutrients and the vitamins and minerals that you need through primarily whole food sources, but quality. Think quality over quantity. Same thing with um, your technique. So you're thinking um, lots of whole foods, like eating the foods you enjoy, but making sure that you are, if your goal is to lose weight, um, being in a calorie deficit, but still ensuring that you're getting enough protein. Um, If you're trying to gain muscle um, or like trying to bulk, then being in a slight calorie surplus, but still using like quality foods primarily to to fuel your workouts. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. And the final thing that you need to focus on is consistency and being patient. So we've all all got several years of weight training under our belt and it's taken years and years to perfect and grow and change and, you know, hone in on our like ideas and methods and philosophies or whatever. Um, But I don't think any of us have ever like taken like a, you know, oh, this isn't working, like I'm out, like I'm done. So you want to make sure that like if you have goals that are related to fitness or health or especially long-term health, you have to think long-term. So you have to think, use the technique that Morgan talked about in our motivation, like visualization. So see the long-term, like picture yourself there and be consistent and be very patient. So Yeah, consistency is is a big one in, in the patience because like, um, I had a guy, I actually commented on my picture today. He, he wrote on it. He put, man, I've tried, I tried, and I tried, and I'll never get that lean. And so I wrote him back. I put, you know what? Add 10 more tries to that and stay consistent. Like, that's the thing. Like, people usually give up too early. Like, oh, man, I did this for three months. Did you really try hard for those three months, though? And were you doing it day in, day out? Like, you know, be patient. Like, really set a goal and do everything you can to execute execute that goal. Like, yeah. Fitness is for everybody. That's the, that's the best part about fitness. There's never been one person in history that tried to do fitness and it was a negative. You know, unless you're doing it wrong and you're hurting yourself. But fitness will benefit you. The human body is meant to move and be healthy. And it rewards you for moving and being healthy. So fitness is for everybody. If you don't think it's for you, well, guess what it is. You have to find your form of fitness, though. Fitness does not have to be weight training. It could be hiking, it could be swimming, it could be cycling, it could be jujitsu, boxing. There's so many different forms of fitness out there. You have to find what works for you. And you have to have the, the nutrition plan that backs up with it. There's not one form of fitness that you could do without the nutrition plan. You know, right. so you have to have, you know, the work ethic and the Hard eating agree. ethic. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, eat for your goals and train for your goals. Yeah. I feel like you're speaking to me right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, 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 mean I, I, I was looking at you, so. <laughs> so. Anything else you guys would like to add? I'm solid. Morgan? No, I think I think you touch on everything, Annie. I freaking okay. love it. Women okay. in fitness. Yeah. <sighs> uh, empowerment. So, 
So this is actually the first episode that we're recording after our official launch. Ooh. So thank you, everybody, for all of the support and listening in and the feedback. We really appreciate it. Um yeah, great to meet everybody that we've met. Like, uh, it's really cool to just, I don't know, start seeing like a little generation of a little baby community. A little community. It's oh. pretty cool. Yeah, it's <laughs> awesome. Like, <laughs> like the DMs, the feedback, the comments, yeah. and like just some people that I see at the gym and they're like, oh man, I listen to the podcast. Like, that is amazing because this, we don't get nothing out of this, man. We literally, we're literally just doing this just like, just to talk and and have fun with fitness and just yeah. spread the knowledge that with that you know all three of us have and so please guys continue to send in your questions we are going to be doing a Q&A episode yes. uh, i'm guessing that's going to be next or we um are going to go over a bunch of the questions you guys have been sending in um on one of the posts um one of our first ones we actually did a you know send in your questions type thing so yeah. so feel free to go back to that post yeah we have it and so put we'll questions. reshare it we'll yeah. reshare that same like Q&A like we got a lot of questions yeah. so even if we don't address every question we could over a couple episodes, but because we want to make sure we answer every question, you know, to the best of our ability. But those help a lot because then we we know what what y'all want to know. So. Yeah. See you guys. And then um, don't forget, we are streaming now on iTunes podcast. So if you're if you have iTunes, if you have an, if you have an iPhone, you should. Um, and we're also streaming now on YouTube. So if you want to watch us interact and, you know, point at each other and see Morgan Flex. And, oh, my gosh. Pause. <laughs> the point <laughs> As if you, like that's what i like i like visually <laughs> watching people <laughs> there you go <laughs> <laughs> he didn't cue me or anything <laughs> so if you guys want to see like morgan said on one of his stories if you guys want to see our ugly mugs interact with each other and um <laughs> and see annie get out angled all day every day uh, over it's here it's not an out angle it's wow fast. that's Dang. the only reason of see, see us in real life she's so far she's actually like five feet behind us <laughs> i know all this is an illusion <laughs> yeah so feel free to um to tune in any way shape or possible if you guys can please um rate us on itunes um it'll help get the podcast out there and move us up on the chart so more people can listen to us um leave us a five-star review if you guys can and an awesome review to go along with it and um yeah, I think that's the it for this episode. Okay. Uh, this is Morgan, Annabelle, and Joseph. And also, Annie, Annabelle's going to be changing her um, Instagram handle. I so um, her new Instagram will be evolve.annabelle. Yeah, so that's going to be her, her new IG handle. So, if, But if you guys already follow her on Loaded Plays and Barbells, don't worry about it. It's just going to convert. You guys are fine. Um, <laughs> but you guys can follow me at fit underscore fluential and Morgan at morgan.aquino. Morgan dot Aquino. <laughs> Appreciate you guys. We love y'all. Keep sending the questions and we'll see you next time. Peace.